Today I'm a working man. Gotta go get some wood at the big box store for my wife. I'm going to build a uh, border around her greenhouse, but I'm not too busy to tell you a story. This one's gonna be quick. First a funny story, then a great quote about the way certain religious groups like to anoint a holy language. It might surprise a few viewers out there that I stayed true to my word and authorized, and I've taught my kids to say the Lord's Prayer in King Jamesy language. This is actually the language of the Book of Common Prayer, but it's identical to the King James in all but a few places. The main difference comes in the forgive us our debts line. Have you ever wondered why we say forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us? When the King James actually says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. As best I can tell, and I've had a little trouble tracing this all out, I asked an Anglican friend, it's because the version of the Lord's Prayer that English speakers tend to know comes from the Book of Common Prayer. I said and authorized that I figured that one way to maintain some of the valuable connections to you know, the, the tradition of the English-speaking church that I do really value would be to teach my kids Psalm 23 and the Lord's Prayer in that traditional language. I want them to know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even though my brother-in-law, when he was a six-year-old, uh, I put this in authorized, was confused by this wording. It's a false friend, want is. He asked his teacher, if the Lord is my shepherd, why would I not want him? Now, my youngest son, I almost wish I were making this up, it is so perfect. He asked me after several months of praying the Lord's Prayer together, about once every two weeks at the dinner table, I suppose, he said, Dad, why do we say our Father which aren't in heaven? He is in heaven, right? This is also the child who heard the title of the 80s pop song, Uptown Girl. I have it on a King Singer CD where they sing some old pop standards, just so you know. He heard that as up down world instead of uptown girl. This happens, okay? Kids do it all the time. No Bible translation or hymn writer could ever stop kids completely from doing this, or adults. But I don't think it's an accident that in both the case of Psalm 23, I shall not want, uh, and our Father which art in heaven, my brother-in-law and my son were tripped up, not by the normal way kids you know, hear funny things, but by false friends. We don't say, I shall not want anymore. We would say, I will not lack. We don't say, our Father which aren't anymore, art. <laughs> we say, our Father who is. Now, my little son is very bright and a good reader, but where would he hear or see this word art used as a verb? Of course, his little brain suggested that what he was hearing was the super common verb, aren't, the contraction. Okay, now I got my pressure treated lumber and I'm ready to go do this greenhouse border for my wife. And I'm ready to uh, give you the great quote that I promised you. It comes from commentator Timothy George in the New American Commentary series. He's commenting on Galatians 4.6. Here's the verse first in the ESV. Because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Timothy George wrote in his commentary, the fact that this word Abba is given here, and also in Romans 8.15, in both Aramaic, that's Abba, and Greek, Pater, indicates the bilingual character of early Christian worship. Throughout the history of the church, various Christian groups have attempted to canonize one particular language as the authorized sacred tongue of religious discourse. Some Orthodox Christians have done that with Greek, uh, some uh, traditional Roman Catholics with Latin, and certain Protestants, George says, with the English of the King James Version. However, George says, the fact that Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ, there is no longer Jew or Gentile does not mean that we must stop speaking Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek. The spirit who cries out, Abba, Father, from our hearts, enabled the gospel to be heard in many of the world's languages of the day at Pentecost.
The same Holy Spirit still blesses the translation of the scriptures into the many diverse languages and dialects of the world today. That's Timothy George. I'm planning to do at some point a much bigger video about the holy languages that various religious groups use. It suffices right now to point out that at heart when certain Protestants insist on using the English of the King James Version, they are attempting to canonize one particular language as the authorized sacred tongue of religious discourse, as George said. And at some point, we're all just going to have to notice the sheer number of second graders and, truth be known, 63-year-olds and 41-year-olds who are getting tripped up by the traditional language because our English has changed. Otherwise, even if we're happy that the spirit spoke in Parthian, Persian, and Pamphylian, and you know, whatever all the languages were at Pentecost, we are implicitly denying that the Holy Spirit can speak our language, our English. That's all, folks. I just had to share that great little story about my son. True story, our Father, which aren't in heaven.